Hi there. In this lecture, we see Bobby Fischer making great use of hanging pawns. His fluency with different pawn structures is really being shown in this particular tournament, which he dominated. So Mario Burtok against Bobby Fischer, Stockholm into zonal, round 22, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop e7, knight f3, knight f6, bishop g5, black castles, e3, b, sorry, not b6, h6, but now b6. So the Tartagora variation, which was to later win a brilliant game in the 1972 World Championship match. So he was playing with the black side here, and he doesn't mind having potential hanging pawns. After c takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes, knight takes d5, e takes, bishop e2, bishop e6. They're going to be formed now after c5, d takes, b takes. They're hanging pawns. They're like an extended isolated pawn. The adjacent files are often good for the rooks. They they cover a lot of key squares, like hooks. So they provide a certain level of activity. Generally, the plan against the hanging pawns is to fix them down and try and win them. With black, you know, if you're with the hanging pawns, rather, not, not with black or white, you can be with them with white. It's generally to use the dynamic potential, quite often opening up bishops, try, trying to use the adjacent files, put pressure. So here we see queen a4 and now a very good use of the semi and b file queen b7 putting immediate pressure on b2 queen a3 knight d7 protects c5 knight e1 on bishop a6 as an alternative queen b6 is fine for black this is uh, okay black's getting a small edge so knight e1 we see a5 knight d3 c4 so this is an interesting case where fisher doesn't mind pushing here he's got a sp specific reason more pressure on b2 and we have rook a b1 being played here it's interesting if knight takes e6 f takes this situation after rook a6 and queen b4 is actually you know very favorable for black positionally there's a big pass pawn here it's very, very nice for black. If we look at this again, instead of uh, queen takes b4, if queen b2, c3 again, here, yeah, pass pawn, is dangerous for white. So we see rook a, b1, but then bishop f5. The rook moves, and here, knight f6, reinforcing d5, not taking immediately on b2, because that's only a small edge for black, this situation. So knight f6, just leaving that pawn to stew, rook d2. But here, guess what Fisher plays? There's an issue with the position for white here. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you play with black? Okay, it looks as though they have been fixed. White's playing a classic strategy, but spanner in the works, g5 forcing move. And now, yeah, where is the knight going? The knight gives itself up here. If knight h3, then knight e4 is vicious. For example, rook d4, queen takes b2. It's just clearly just winning a pawn. And here, bishop e6. This is going to be uh, very unpleasant after c3. And rook d8. This pawn is a runaway pawn. And there's king safety issues here. So black's getting a big advantage there. If we look at that again... After knight e4. Yeah, it's just a very dangerous position. So rook d4 was the example given there. Ah, there is something else that I wanted to show you. G4. Here we can play g takes f4 and knight e4. And here, this is also quite nice for black this position it's a bit too fragmented black's pawns king safety has been uh, reduced a bit black does stand better there as well so yeah surprising move g5 and it prompts white to give up a piece knight takes d5 so knight takes d5 bishop takes c4 the snag is here it looks as though maybe white was banking on bishop f3 maybe this is a total miscalculation thinking he's going to get the piece back so this didn't happen but guess what fisher had here 
If I give you five seconds to pause the video, what would you play here with black, which saves the day? Okay. Bishop d3, yeah, puts the spanner in the works again, disconnects d2 from d5. If e4, you know, bishop takes f1, that's getting a big advantage. If rook takes d3, c takes, there's no problem, knight b4, hits the queen. Just material up for black, big advantage for black. So bishop takes c4, bishop e6, black's piece up, and now, in fact, strikes again. Tactically, Fisher strikes again tactically. Guess what he plays here? Play to play. Very sharp tactical game. Knight takes e3, it threatens uh, a com killer common square, queen g2, checkmate. And it hits the bishop. So we have queen takes e3. Bishop takes c4, bishop up, h4, rook e8. Queen g3, we have queen e7, b3, bishop e6, f4, g4. Yeah, there's no attack here. Check. After bishop f5, there's no attack. It's all been locked up. White resigned. So Fisher showing great versatility, adopting different pawn structures. Here, the Tartico variation is a very common way of getting hanging pawns from the opening. And I cover this particular game example because of the hanging pawn aspect in the pawn structure course I have, by the way, <laughs> if you want to check that out. This is an example which um, uh, I already had some great analysis, but, you know, this is a different perspective slightly on Fisher's, you know, tactics and, and strategy, this course. But the hanging pawns perspective is also the insight here that it's the adjacent files you're often using when you have a hanging pawn structure like this. If you imagine uh, an isolated pawn, it is like a smaller version. You do get hook squares with an isolated pawn. You do get adjacent files. And sometimes the hook squares, you know, if you have a knight on e4, there's knight f2 with, with isolated pawns. They, the hook squares are important, you know, for sometimes for king safety. But here, yeah, it's the adjacent files are dangerous. And Fisher proved the b file really, really handy b file here. Uh, with this, I mean, but g5, the, the tactical resourcefulness helps show the positional aspects in black's favor. It's a dynamic pawn structure, and Fisher needs to play dynamically, tactically, to, to get the most out of it. Otherwise, there is a risk with these dynamic pawn structures that your counterplay is just reduced to zero and you end up losing all the end games. And you know, that's quite a common theme with the dynamic pawn structures, whether it's isolated queen's pawn or hanging pawn or rather shaky pawn structures. You don't want simplification, your counterplay to be uh, reduced generally. You, you want to make hay one that the sunshine, uh, so to speak. Uh, you want to exploit it while you can. And yeah, g5 at this right moment puts a spanner in the works. And yeah, it's black in the driving seat, funny enough here. So this, this pressure on b2 is is very, very evident. If the knight had re retreated, knight e4, queen takes b2, is very, very evident. So very active use of the hanging pawns in this game. I'll take you to the final possession again. Okay, hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks very much. Hi guys, if you enjoyed this video lecture, you might want to get more at my course, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link. You know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.